the story of Islam. When the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, went out and made his public declaration, he was received with Abu Lahab, very, very upset and angry, saying, how dare you say this, tabban laka ya Muhammad, may you be cursed, and all kinds of rude remarks from Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab used to follow the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and imagine it's his own uncle, Abdul Uzza, following him wherever he would go, and he would say, don't listen to this man. I am his uncle, he's my nephew, and he has no idea what he's talking about. He's been affected by madness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayat in Surah Al-Masad to describe the situation that Abu Lahab was in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tabbat yada Abi Lahab wa tab. May, may the hands of Abu Lahab perish, and he himself did perish. Ma aghna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab. Neither his wealth nor any of his worldly gains were of any benefit to him. He will burn in a flaming fire. And his wife too will be carrying thorny kindling. Around her neck will be a rope of palm fiber. Now if you're listening to this, it might sound very harsh. Why is he going to perish? And why is his wife going to perish? Let's take a few seconds to reflect on the surah and the context behind it. Abu Lahab, two of his sons were married to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu daughters. Utba and Utayba were married to Ruqayya and Umm Kulthum. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when he came with the message of Islam, of course, his daughters were supportive and they wanted to become Muslim. But the husbands put pressure on the two daughters not to embrace Islam. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu continued to tell them, hold on and be patient. Abu Lahab decided, I want to add extra pressure. So what did he decide to do? He decided to tell his two sons, divorce the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu daughters. So imagine, the first one, Utbah, divorced Ruqayya and told her, go home, I'm done with you. She went home crying to her father Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Umm Kulthum, on the other hand, her husband Utayba said, I'm not gonna divorce you. I'm going to keep you and I'm going to make sure you suffer. I'm going to keep you and I'm going to put so much pressure on top of your under you that you would basically beg me to leave and I would not let you go. Subhanallah. In addition to that, the wife of Abu Lahab would use her wealth. She was wealthy and so was Abdul Uzza. They would use their wealth to uh, get people to basically attack Muslims. And they would use their wealth to hire uh, propagandists, poets who would use their words to say all kinds of terrible things about Islam and Muslims, subhanAllah. So imagine divorcing the Prophet Muhammad Sallam's two daughters. And the second one was kept for a long time until her husband passed away and finally she went back to her father. In addition to that, they would use their wealth to basically increase and spread all kinds of propaganda about Rasulullah Sallallahu And then finally, she herself, the wife of Abu Lahab, would put all kinds of thorns and all kinds of dirt in the path of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and she would go ahead and spread all kinds of lies and rumors about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Quran comes to basically issue a statement here that these individuals have had their hearts sealed and they would not accept the truth. And they would be condemned and they would be punished by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Now what's amazing, in addition to all of that, Abu Lahab, and we'll come to this later on, when the Arabs decided to put socio-economic sanctions on the family of Rasulullah Abu Lahab said, yes, I'm part of the family, but I disown the family. I want to have nothing to do with the family. So when the rest of the tribes were boycotting the Muslim family of Banu Hashim, he himself, Abu Lahab Abdul Uzza, who was part of the family, decided to distance himself away from the family. So how did he eventually pass? Imagine this, his sons abandoned him towards the end of his life because he got a disease that was contagious and nobody wanted to touch him. And he passed away alone in his own bed. Imagine this, passed away alone in his own bed. And finally when he was, when he was gone and his, his body started to rot, the people who lived in the area said to the children, the sons, guys go take care of your father's body because the smell is starting to cause us discomfort. They went and they buried their own father. And they didn't even touch the body directly. They went and they used sticks to push 
the body after digging a hole into the ground, off the bed and into the burial site which was right next to the bed. What a way to go. And this in itself became a sign for some of the Meccans. They said, look, the Quran made it clear that Abu Lahab would not accept Islam, that he would continue in his aggression towards Rasulullah sallallahu And for that reason, what the Quran said would happen, that he would perish, did happen. And they considered this to be a sign. Today we'll look at the earliest reactions to the revelation. How did they react having heard this Quran directly? They said, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ The disbelievers advise one another, don't listen to the Quran. وَالْغَوْ فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَغْلِبُونَ But drown it out so that you may prevail. So imagine, someone like Al-Akhnas would hire a singer who would stop by the Prophet when he's reciting the Qur'an and the singer would increase the sound to distract people from the Qur'an because they recognize its power. Why were they advising each other to drown out the sound of the Qur'an? Why couldn't they bear to listen to it? What was so dangerous about the message and the style of the Qur'anic delivery? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُمْ يَنْهَوْنَ عَنْهِ They turn people away from the Qur'an. وَيَنْأَوْنَ عَنْهِ And they distant themselves away from it. And in reality, they're only destroying themselves, but they fail to perceive. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was sitting with the companions and they told him, let Quraysh, let the Meccans hear the Quran recited publicly. And he was the first person from the companions to recite the Quran publicly. So he went up to a place where they could hear him and he recited with a beautiful voice. Now Ab Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was a person who was very thin. So he recited, and as soon as they saw him reciting, they tried to attack him, and they tried to beat him. But he continued reciting, and he made sure he was far enough that he could get as much Qur'an recited as possible. Which surah did he recite? To get the Meccans to listen to the Qur'an publicly. He recited Surah Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman. The most compassionate. Allama al Quran. Taught the Quran. Khalaq al insan. Created humanity. Allama al bayan. And taught humans the speech, the eloquence. Al shamsu al qamar bi husdan. The sun and the moon travel with precision. The stars and the trees bow down in submission to Allah. The sky he raised and he set the balance of justice. Do not defraud the scales. Do not manipulate the scales. وَأَقِيمُوا الْوَزْنَ بِالْقِسْطِ Way with justice. وَلَا تُخْسِرُوا الْمِيزَانِ And do not give short measure. Don't lie, don't cheat with people. وَالْأَرْضَ وَضَعَهَا لِلْأَنَامِ He laid out the earth for all the beings, all the creatures. فِيهَا فَاكِهَا On this earth you'll find all kinds of beautiful fruits. وَالنَّخْنُ ذَاتُ الْأَكْنَامِ And the palm trees with date stalks. وَالْحَبُّ ذُو الْعَصْفِ وَالْرَيْحَانِ And the grain with husks and the beautiful plants with all kinds of beautiful smells. فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Which of your Lord's favors will you humans and jinn both deny. Some of the Quraysh leaders, because they were so amazed by the Qur'an, used to sneak out at night and they listened to the Qur'an being recited by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in his home. In fact, some books of seerah, history books, tell us that once the leaders of Quraysh caught each other listening to the Qur'an at night. So they took a pledge not to come back again, fearing that their presence would become public news and this would encourage more people to do the same. So for one reason or another, they kept breaking this pledge. And they met each other one time after another 
in front of the house on the way back to the, from the Prophet Muhammad's home and they promised we're not going to come back again but they broke the promise because they could not resist the Quran they wanted to know what the Quran says about them they wanted to know what the Quran was going to comment uh, on in terms of their reactions they were amazed by the style and the delivery of the Quran and the content of the Quran in fact Al-Walid ibn Mughira and he was one of the most affluent members of the Quraysh and affluent members of the community and he was influential because he was trained in poetry deeply read in language and an amazing warrior a strong warrior with wealth had a complete personality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will describe in the Quran later when he heard the Quran what did he say when they asked him tell us what is your opinion on the Quran you as a man of language as a man of eloquence tell us what do you think he says wallahi laqad sami'tu min muhammad Kalaman, ma huwa min kalam al ins. I recently heard from Muhammad the word that was recited, it was not the word of a human. Wala min kalam al jinn. And it was not the word of a jinn. Wa inna lahu la halawa. It has sweetness to it. Wa inna alayhi la talawa. And it's presented gracefully. Wa inna alahu la muthmir. It's fruitful, delightful on top. Wa inna asfalahu la mubdiq. It's copious at the bottom. Beautiful base. وَإِنَّهُ لَيَعْلُ وَلَا يُعْلَى عَلَيْهِ It rises above everything else. No speech can rise above it. Those who heard the Qur'an described it as being powerful. It touched the core of its audience. It forced them to look within, to think, to look deeply, to reflect, to see beyond the facades and the deception of the world and the deception of people. To see what was wrong with their society. The Qur'an taught them, encouraged them, look, search, discover, ask questions. And look at the wrong that is lurking within. It taught them to question the legitimacy of the idols, challenge the socioeconomic systems, and it asserted that every individual without exception will be held accountable in front of Allah. Let's live some of these Quranic themes together before we explore the, Qur the Quraysh's first collective decision against the Prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقِفُوهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ مَسْئُولُونَ Ask them to stand, for they will be questioned. The Qur'an made it clear that every action and intention was being recorded, that everyone would eventually have to stand in front of Allah as their account is read in front of them. For the oppressor who, was, who thought that they could get away with anything, this idea of accountability shook them to their core. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes, وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابِ فَتَرَى الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا The day that the book of the records will be presented in front of them and they will say, when they look at their deeds or the book of their deeds, they will say, Woe to us! What is, what is the matter with this book? It leaves nothing small nor nothing major. Nothing is left unaccounted for. And they will find everything that they've done present before them. And Allah comments, your Lord will never wrong anyone in the smallest of ways. The Quranic style was refreshing for the oppressed. It advocated on behalf of the weak, the orphan, and the disenfranchised. For example, in Surah Al-Takweer, as we've mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded them, وَإِذَا الْمَوْؤُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ When the baby girl who was buried alive will be asked, بِأَيِّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ For what crime were you put to death? Notice that the person committing the act is not given a voice. But the person, the female herself, that the act was committed against, is the one that's made to speak. This is beautiful. The little girl who was robbed of her voice, suffocated by the dust as she was buried alive, is now given her voice back. And the person who committed the atrocious act is given no space to explain. Because there's nothing to be said, or because they're not entitled to a voice on that day as a punishment for the atrocity of the crime. Now let this sink in. This is very refreshing for someone who's experiencing injustice. 
This is very refreshing for someone who's living this experience. The Quran also points out some of the ingratitude and the internal mental states and the spiritual states of its audience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَعْرِفُونَ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ يُنْكِرُونَهَا They know and they're aware of the favors of Allah. They're surrounded by them, but they deny them. And most of them, kafirun. They are ungrateful. It addressed every reader, every reader individually, highlighting, for example, the arrogance. يَا أَيُّهَا الْإِنسَانُ مَا غَرَّكَ بِرَبِّكَ الْكَرِيمُ what has emboldened you against your Lord who's been most generous to you? The one who created you, fashioned you, and perfected your design. He could have, and he does have the capacity to form you in, the, in, in any way that he will. And he chose for you the best of ways. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ It addressed their presuppositions about wealth, prosperity, bursting the bubble of their prosperity complex. Allah says, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّ أَكْرَمًا Whenever a human being is tested by the Lord through generosity and blessing, they boast, my Lord has been so Amazingly honoring me, amazingly giving me. My Lord has been generous, giving me because I deserve it. But when Allah tests this person by limiting the provision, what do they say? They protest and they say, My Lord has undeservedly humiliated me. So when good happens, I deserve it. When bad happens, I don't deserve it. You attribute the good to yourself. Failing to attribute the good to Allah and you attribute, the, uh, you attribute or you find a way of attributing or deflecting the wrong in your life to someone else. It's because of someone else. So imagine the Quran is addressing all of this piece by piece, pointing out the psychological, the spiritual states of its audience. The Quran also captures the reaction to the Quran and the reactions of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam to the reaction. So this whole Meccan, Conversation, dialogue back and forth is captured beautifully in the Quran. Some of them were surprised, astonished that revelation would come to another man. Is it astonishing the Quran asks to people that we have sent revelation to a man from among them, instructing them, warn humanity. And give good news to the believers that they will have an honorable status with Allah. That this believer said, Indeed, this man, Muhammad, is a clear magician. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad. They called the Prophet Muhammad a magician because the Quran's influence was powerful. In fact, it was the power of the Quran. And this power of the Quran did not or was not only recognized by humans. It was recognized by the jinn who came to listen to it. In fact, a whole surah is revealed to capture the attention of the jinn to the Quran and the reaction of the jinn to the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّهُ اسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَقَالُوا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا It has been revealed to me that a group of jinn listened to this Qur'an and they said to their fellow jinn, Indeed, this is a wondrous recitation, a wondrous revelation. يَهْدِي إِلَى الرُّشْدِ فَآمَنَّا بِهِ It leads to right guidance, so we believed in it. وَلَنْ نُشِّرِكَ بِرَبِّنَا أَحَدًا and we will never associate anyone with our Lord. And now we believe that our Lord exalted is His Majesty, has never taken a mate nor an offspring. And the foolish among us used to say all kinds of outrageous falsehoods about Allah. And 
and we certainly thought that the humans and the jinn would never dare to speak lies about Allah. They could lie about other humans, but lie about the one that created them. They were the Quraysh's reactionary body language was also captured in the Quran. That is, believers would almost cut you down with their eyes on Muhammad when they hear you recite the Quran. And they say, certainly, he's a madman. And it's actually a reminder. Muhammad and the Quran, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik, ala nabina Muhammad, have come with a reminder to humanity. So the Quran came to address the Prophet Muhammad's reaction to the accusations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ Certainly we know that your heart is truly distressed by what they say. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ Glorify the praise of your Lord and be the one who always prays. وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ And worship your Lord until the inevitable comes to you. May Allah bless you and your families and give you Jannah al-Firdaus. See you next episode. Wassalamu alaikum.